Hey Tubies, it's Psychic Bob, and it is so awesome to be with you. Well, here it is, it's Monday, and that means it's time for horoscopes. I'm getting this out a little late today, because Psychic Bob's had a busy day. Uh, as many of you know, we had a big fire a few weeks here, a few weeks ago here at our building, and so we're still having renovations and people coming in that are evaluating damage. So anyways, I've been tied up today because they had to come into my unit and deal with stuff. They're testing for smoke damages. And uh, so anyways, I had to clear out today. So I've been out all day. And I decided to go to Washington, D.C. That's right. You know, I live here in the nation's capital. And I went to the museums. <gasps> Look where I went. To the National Gallery of Art. Oh, my gosh. Now, for those of you who are wondering, they say, gee, Bob, we want to see what you saw there. Not to worry, on Thursday, I'm going to be putting up my video. We're going to have about my trip to Washington today. So on Thursday, for Vlog Thursday, we'll have about my trip to D.C. and you'll get to see all the amazing artworks and museums. And so we had a great time. Well, you know, the wonderful thing at the National Gallery is you can buy art really cheap there. And so I bought a number of prints and I want to show them to you real quickly here. This one is a Vincent Van Gogh. It's an Impressionist painting. And it's called, um, Cla it's, it's got, not Van Simbic, it's Claude Monet, sorry. And it's um, Palazzo de Mula, Venice. And it was painted in 1908. And it's in the Impressionist style. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. I'm crazy about this. And then another one I got was a Van Gogh. I did buy a Van Gogh. And I'm going to frame all of these, and I'll show you where they're framed. But isn't that beautiful? I actually saw the original of this, and I'll show you that on my video on Thursday. But uh, this is, a, what do they call this one? Oops, I can't see. I don't have my glasses here. Oops, hold on. i got to read. I can't read the small print. This one is called Green Wheat Fields at Over, and it was painted in 1890. Isn't that beautiful? Van Gogh has such a dreamy quality about it. I just love it. I'm crazy about it. Um, and then I also am crazy about Matisse, Henri Matisse. And this is, Henri Matisse is called Open Window. And you can see it's like looking out through French doors into boats on the water outside of his house. Isn't that great? I think these are going to look beautiful when they're framed. And then I bought another, uh, this is another Claude Monet. This is a very famous one. I actually saw the original painting. We have this, it's called Japanese Footbridge. We have it in our national collection here in the U.S. at the National Gallery. Isn't that just gorgeous? It's hard to capture the colors as nicely here as they are on the print. But it's just a lovely, lovely print. And then I was so amazed to discover that in our national collection, we have some original Matisse paper cuts. Matisse, you cut out paper. And this, I actually saw the original of this, and it's called Beasts of the Sea. It's from 1950. And it's actually not painted. It's cut out of paper and, and kind of done in a collage. And I saw the original of this. It looks just like this. It's something that's much larger. But anyways, I got these prints. I was just so excited. Anyway, I had to share them with you, and on um, Thursday, we'll have the video where I actually go and see a lot of these famous paintings. So definitely, definitely check back here. But I had to share them with you today. Well, you know what it is. It's now time to spin around our big zodiac wheel. That's right, it's horoscopes. And for those of you who are new here, this is something we do every Monday. Uh, I get gather up, uh, you know, the uh, transits and see what's going on in the stars, and we have a, a little report. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through each day of the week, and I'm going to talk about the major transits that are influencing all of us. And then, after that, we'll have individual horoscopes for each zodiac sign. So all 12 zodiac signs will get a horoscope. So if you're watching this, listen up, because you will get your horoscope. And, you know, horoscopes are a wonderful way to get a little bit of psychic help because some of you may not be able to afford a private reading right now, but you'd like a little extra help. This is a wonderful way to get some help. And if you're waiting still for messages from the spirit world, definitely listen to your horoscopes, okay? 
Well, let's jump right in and see what's going on here. Oh, my glasses are dirty. I tell you, I've been running around all over the city today. I love living near D.C. I tell you, it's so much fun. All right, well, here we are, and oh, let me get on the right page. First of all, I need to tell you what time period today's video is for. This is for Monday. Oops, hold on, I'm on the wrong page. Okay, today's video is for Monday, August the 13th, 2018, through Sunday, August the 19th, 2018. So everything in this video is for that time frame, for basically the next week from today through next Sunday, okay? So let's look at what's going on here. Well, you know, I have to be honest, this is going to be a little bit of a challenging week for a lot of us. Uh, there are a lot of square transits this week. Squares tend to be challenges in the zodiac and uh you know we have a lot of squares let me just tell you here we are at monday our sun is in leo by the way happy birthday to our leo babies and uh, we're going to be in the sign of leo until august 22nd so all through this next week we'll be in into leo but then the following week we're going to move over into virgo but we'll talk about that later but happy birthday to our Leos, okay? Our moon today is in Virgo, which is an Earth sign. That's that's one of the saving graces today. Earth energy is very grounding, very, you know, uh, very grounding, basically. Now, our challenges is that today our moon is in opposition to Neptune. Mercury is square Jupiter. Venus is square Saturn. And Mars is square Uranus. What all this adds up to is today in any dealings with people just Stick to the facts. Do not elaborate beyond what you need to say and do not speculate. Because with Venus square Saturn, it's real easy for people to get on the wrong foot with each other and have a lot of misunderstandings. Mars square Uranus means people may be oversensitive and take what you say to an extreme. So be very careful today with your words. And as I said, stick to the facts, don't speculate. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. <laughs> Kiss principle. Now, going into Tuesday, which will be August the 14th, we've got our moon in Virgo. Again, that's that wonderful Earth energy. We've got our moon trine Mars, which kicks up some energy there. Moon squares Saturn. And uh, that's going to bring in some balance here because Saturn's kind of the breaks of the zodiac. And we've got Jupiter trine Neptune, very powerful aspect for psychic work. And Saturn is trying Uranus, which means insights that come but through wisdom. What this means is on Tuesday, there is going to be power to move forward, but you still have to be patient. Um, the moon trying Mars is kind of giving us some power. That Virgo energy gives us power. Uh, and, you know, if it's a really good day for you to work on job advancement, job transition, now you may not see results right away. Uh, but you'll have a sense that you're moving forward. So Tuesday is probably one of our, probably the strongest day of this week for success. So, you know, whatever you need to get going, it's important. Try to really launch it on, on Tuesday, and that way you'll have a better go at it, okay? Now, when we go into Wednesday, our energies are shifting a little bit because I've got our moon moving into Libra, which is wonderful air energy. And the moon in Libra encourages conversation, it makes people want to be more social. However, warning point, Mercury is square Jupiter. Mercury is our planet communication. Square Jupiter means that there may be a lot of talk, but things don't really get resolved, okay? Mercury, uh, excuse me, Mars is square Uranus, which against people may be a little oversensitive. Be very careful with your words. Jupiter is trying Neptune, which means you're going to have a lot of inner wisdom. You're going to get a sense of where things are going but there's not a lot of energy to complete tasks. So Wednesday's really a day you wanna stay silent and listen to your inner voice, listen to your inner guide. Not a lot of outer world success will be accomplished, as I said, pretty much most of this week, but Wednesday, definitely be very careful with your words, okay? Going into Thursday, the 16th, we've got our moon still in Libra. That's a wonderful air energy, again, stimulating communication. However, our Mars, uh, excuse me, our moon is square Mars, which is, people may feel, again, a little oversensitive. Mercury is square Jupiter, blocks in communication. Mars is square Uranus. Again, people may get a little zany and out of control. 
However, we got Saturn trying Uranus, which means that there is a chance for wisdom to prevail and sudden insights to kind of bring some balance, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Thursday means that inspiration may come, but timing indicates delay, so you're going to have to be patient, okay? Again, this is going to be a week where it's like a lot of talk, maybe not a lot of action, but just keep talking, okay? Saturn trying Uranus means you'll be given the words of wisdom to kind of have a breakthrough, okay? Once we get into Friday, our moon moves into Scorpio, which is water energy, and that can be a little tricky here because emotions are gonna be running high all week, okay? We've got Mars square Uranus, which makes people a little oversensitive, and with that Scorpio water energy, be very careful, okay? Moon is, tri moon is square, excuse me, moon is square Mercury, again, blocks in communication, inner communication as well as outer communication, and Mercury is square Jupiter, again, delays. Jupiter is usually a positive planet, and actually in this aspect with Mercury square Jupiter, it's not necessarily negative, like hateful content or hateful conversation, but it just means like talking just gets kind of sidetracked and not a lot gets done. Um, what you may find on my Monday, uh, excuse me, Friday, the 17th, I can't talk today, is that people may be closed or oversensitive. So you may feel like you're talking to them, but you're not getting a feel of rapport back. Just be patient with that, okay? Saturday, I got to tell you, it's not a good day to try to tackle anything. Our moon is still in Scorpio, which is that deep emotional water energy. Our sun is square of the moon. That means the outer world and the inner world are blocking each other. So you're not gonna really feel in tune with anything and you're not gonna see a lot of outer world progress. So Saturday is really your rest day, retreat day. If you can totally avoid doing anything, you know, especially any major projects on Saturday, that would be the day to, to definitely take off, okay? Now, Sunday, kind of some, some interesting shifts here. Our moon moves into Sagittarius, which again, kicks up some firepower to move forward. However, we got a little bit of challenge that the Mercury is still square Jupiter. Again, talking may not resolve a lot. Mars is square Uranus. Again, people may be oversensitive. Jupiter, however, is again trying Neptune, which gives us great inner wisdom and knowledge. Trust your inner voice. Saturn is trying Uranus. Again, wisdom and breakthrough and insights, okay? And what this means is that Sunday, your successes will come from within. Your wisdom your breakthrough, your understanding all comes from within. So listen to your inner voice. As I said, this is a little bit of a challenging week, but if you can kind of work with that, you'll get through just fine, okay? So don't give up, just keep going, but try to be sensitive, okay? Well, there we go. Now that's our major transits. Now we're gonna jump through all 12 zodiac signs here, okay? So listen up. If you don't know what your zodiac sign is, I give the birth date range after each sign. Now, you know, I get this every week, no matter how often I say it, but somebody always writes to me and says, well, Psyche Bob, another astrologer said that I was an Aries, but according to yours, I'm a Taurus by the birth date range. What that means is you're on the cusp, and basically that means you get two horoscopes. So listen to the Aries, listen to the Taurus, and see which one you feel more aligned with. So don't let it stress you out. You just get twice the amount of information, okay? So there you go. Well, we're going to spin around our big wheel and see what's in the stars for you. So listen up. All right, our first sign today is Aries, and that's March 21st through April 19th. You know, Aries, you are in tune with your psychic self this week. Let the spirit lead you. You're going to find in work as well as in social life, it's like the spirit is moving through you. You're very in tune with psychic energy. You're, in fact, you're really a channel this week. It's like the spirit just flows through you and you find that your words flow eloquently when you let the spirit lead. So definitely Aries focus on meditation this week and being open to receiving communications from your higher self as well as the spirit world. Also highlighted for Aries this week, or it's just connected to writing. So it might be a good time to do creative writing, particularly like write a novel, channel a book, you know, all of these things. Your key word this week, Aries, is channeling. There you go. Our next side is Taurus, and that's April 20th to May 20th. 
Taurus, this week you've got to be really careful because you're kind of in the spotlight. A lot of Tauruses are going to have a lot of people looking to them for the answers, okay? Be very careful, be very judicious with your words, and make sure to clarify point by point by point. Now, some people may be impatient this week because of that, you know, Mercury square bars, and they may try to like rile you up, don't give in to it, stick to being very methodical, very thorough. Uh, you know, Taurus, you're going to kind of feel like the energy, it's kind of a little bit like when Mercury's retrograde. There's a lot of room for you guys to get contracts backwards or misunderstand terms. So be very specific, very detailed, and just flow with it, okay? This is also the same in relationships. If you're planning a date, be very specific. Text, email, and phone call. Triple cover yourself because that way there'll be no confusion, okay? Um, also highlighted for Taurus this week are issues connected to property investments. So might be a good time to look at buying a house, but be doubly careful with that contract, or triply careful, I should say. Your key word this week, Taurus, is clarify. Clarify each point of detail. All right, our next sign is Gemini, and that's May 21st through June 20th. By the way, did I give the dates for Taurus? Taurus is April 20th to May 20th. Gemini is May 21st to June 20th. You know, Gemini's this week, there's a lot of air energy. It's stimulating you and fire energy. But Gemini's got to be very careful. Some other Taurus, you can't just rush into, you know, where angels fear to tread. Gemini's, you're going to have to walk lightly this week. A lot of people are going to kind of be kind of crazy and zany. And so it's like walking on eggshells. Not necessarily the most fun, but do this and work. Don't just assume stuff. Double check with your bosses on anything you do so that there's no miscommunication. And you'll find that by having patience with the system rather than rushing ahead, you're really going to have success. In relationships also, this is going to be a week where Geminis are a little challenged because their partner and them may not be on the same page. You may feel like you're talking and they're just not getting it. Just be very specific with every single point. Take your time, take things slow, and, you know, just give them a lot of leeway to have misunderstanding and know that in the coming weeks it'll all get sorted out, okay? Also highlighted for Geminis this week are issues uh, connected to spiritual studies. So it's a good time to explore your inner spirit, maybe study spiritualism or Wicca or some mystical religion. Your key word this week, Gemini, is... Patience. Have patience with yourself and with others. All right, our next sign is Cancer, and that's June 21st to July 22nd. You know, Cancers, you're seeing things in a clarity that most people aren't right now. And you want to really hone in on that sort of awareness that you have. Try to share your insights, particularly in work, because you may find that people that hither, henceforth have not considered your views will be open to them this week. Kansas will find in the area of personal relationships as well that they get a real sense of the timing and their where their partner is. So this is a very good week to work on mending relationships at work as well in personal life. And if you have people that have been challenging, step into that place of listening and try to understand things from their point and you'll see a lot more success. Also highlighted for Cancers this week are issues connected to uh, media production. So if you're a Cancer, you've been wanting to start a YouTube channel or develop a Facebook page, good time for that as well. Your key word this week, Cancer, is aware. All right. Our next sign is Leo, and that's July 23rd through August 22nd. You know, Leos, this week for you, it's all about the inner knowing. People are going to seek you out for your wisdom, your insight, your knowledge. Make sure to have it prepared for them. Leos would find to do very well, they'll do very well this week in work if they think a step ahead and then prepare a response. Because Leos will find themselves drawn into meetings where they're suddenly asked to give an accounting on a project maybe something they haven't thought about for three or four months. Go back this week, Leos, and look at old projects you've done and think about giving status reports and updates. 
that's going to serve you very well. In the area of personal relationships, Leo, you may find it a little surprising this weekend that partners may reach out to you and, and put you on the spot and say, well, what is the status of our relationship? Are we going to marriage? So if you get that kind of questioning, don't be panicking. Uh, know that people are around you are awakening and they're trying to seek your knowledge because your power is very bright right now, Leos, and people are gravitating towards your light, okay? Also highlighted for Leos this week are issues connected to creative arts. So it's a good time for you to maybe pick up a paintbrush and see if you can make a painting or buy some clay and do a sculpture. Your key word this week, Leo, is insight. Be ready with your insights. All right. Our next sign is Virgo, and that's August 23rd through September 22nd. You know, Virgos, you're a little bit like the Leos this week in that people are one of picking your brain. They want updates. They want status reports. They want everything instantly. Virgos, you know, this is a great time for you to draw on your wisdom and your inner detail. Virgos have a sense of eagle eye perspective that is really second to none. And, you know, Virgos, this week you really want to be all about the details study the minutia because the minutia is going to count you know uh so if you're at a you know working on a project and you're 28 percent done don't say 30 say 28 percent because that little two percent makes all the difference this week for you uh in the area of personal relationships virgo you're going to find that people are really fascinated with you and drawn to you to ask a lot of questions but you're going to want to know everything about your life and if you're a single Virgo and into dating, just be open to, to talking a lot about yourself because they're going to want to know, okay? And if you're in a relationship, it's almost like your partner is rediscovering you. And you may find that there are things about your own journey in life that you realize you haven't shared with them. So be open to that conversation of sharing your journey and being open to, to learning about each other, okay? Also highlighted for Virgos this week, are issues connected to travel. So it's a good time if you want to explore the world, look into that. Your key word this week, Virgo, is details. The details are important. Don't omit them. All right, our next sign is Libra, and that's September 23rd to October 22nd. Leos, you are in psychic mode also this week. You are feeling inspired. You're seeing new ways of doing things. This is a great time for Libras, excuse me, not Leos, Libras to step into their new way of doing things. Be open to breaking patterns, breaking molds, and ex experimenting and trying new things. For those of you Lib Libras who are thinking about starting a business, now is a great time to launch forward and be creative. Don't wait for thinking when things are right. Libra, the time is now. So let the spirit guide you. Many Libras are going to find that they're feeling very avant-garde and ready to do things they've never done before. You know, you may be a Libra and you thought, I've never gone skydiving. Well, maybe you're inspired. Follow that inspiration because you're going to find that, that you keep mixing and mingling with people that help you follow your dreams and be inspired as well. Uh, in the area of personal relationships also, Libra, a lot of excitement this week. People are really drawn to your dynamic energies. And so be open to new business partnerships as well as new friendships and even romance. Also highlighted for Libras this week uh, are issues connected to business development. So, you know, again, if you're feeling like you want to start your own business, really take steps now to make that happen. Explore it, you know, explore financing, explore partnerships, set it in motion. It, you'll rock it. Um, also highlighted here for Libras this week are also issues connected to mysticism as well. So if you even want to explore astrology or spiritual subjects or magic, do that as well. Your key word this week, Libra, is inspiration. All right, our next is Scorpio, and that's October 23rd to November 21st. Scorpio, people around you are really feeling that sensitivity vibe. And as a Scorpio, you're very empathic. So definitely pay attention this week to your empathic feelings. You're going to find that at work, you just get a sense whether you should go in the boss's office or stay in your office. 
Trust that on every count this week. That's going to bring you a lot of success. You're also going to find in the work area that people are reaching out to you with their emotional problems in a way that you may not have seen before. Be an ear to them. Listen because you're going to win friends and influence people by being present to help them. So this week, Scorpios want to speak little but empathize a lot, okay? Same thing in personal relationships, Scorpio. You're going to find that, you know, like you, if you end up going on a date, that your partner may want to share with you more about their life and journey than you were expecting on a first date. But be open to that because they feel like they can trust you. And Scorpio, you know, you're one of the signs of the Zodiac who really has a gift of empathy and can really absorb people's knowledge and feelings and secrets. So be open to being a wisdom keeper and a secret keeper as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Also highlight for Scorpios this week uh, are issues connected to home renovations. So you might want to get inspired and redecorate your house. Your key word this week, Scorpio, is gentleness. Approach all people with gentleness and you'll receive the blessing of their friendships. All right, our next sign, Sagittarius, November 22nd through December 21st. You know, Sag's money just keeps flowing into your coffers right now. Sag's are going to find that it's very easy to get ahead in work. And for those of you who are Sagittarius who think about starting a business, money is abundant for you. So Sag's should really think about moving forward financially this week and taking steps to do that. You're going to find that that, that money energy, that success, also carries over into relationships in the sense that you're very rich in love. People want to be part of your world and so allow people to come close. They're not here to rob you. They want to help you and grow with you, okay? So be open to growth personally as well as professionally this week, okay? I also highlighted for Sagittarius this week are issues connected to uh, music appreciation. So might be a good time to go to a concert Take in those vibes and let it inspire you further. Your key word this week, Sagittarius, is prosperity. There you go. I'm hanging out with the Sagittarius. They got the money. <laughs> All right. Our next sign is Capricorn, December 22nd through January 19th. You know, Capricorns, lately you have been in major psychic mode, and this week is no exception. Though the outer world may seem to be lost and confused, Capricorns will find that their inner knowledge is really on point this week. So trust that inner voice, particularly in business dealings. Don't rush ahead. Be patient. You're going to find that the spirit is leading you to the right timing. Same thing also in personal relationships, Capricorn. You're just going to have your sense on the heartbeat of that special someone. You're going to know who's into you or who's not into you. Trust that, you know, whether to move forward or close out a relationship that's no longer mutually satisfying and allow yourself to trust that inner wisdom let it lead you let it guide you and you're going to rock it okay also highlighted for capricorns this week are issues connected to occult studies particularly astrology so be open to learning more about the stars and their influence in your life your key word this week capricorn is psychic give in to the psychic all right, our next side, Aquarius, January 20th through February 18th. You know, Aquarius, this week is one of these weeks where things are kind of unorthodox around you. Your, your best laid plans may go awry. Don't worry about it. Just be open to the changes right now. Aquarians are going to really find that, particularly in work, that if they just go with the flow, even though the flow may be a little erratic this week and irregular, that they're going to be just fine. Aquarius, let go of rigidity now and just embrace whatever now is, okay? So don't get caught up in your mind of things must be a certain way. Just let things happen. And, you know, Aquarius, I would tell you, you know, don't get too hot, hung up in trying to make minutia, you know, the minutia of details and plans as well because you'll find that there's a lot of shifts this week. And, and no matter, you know how they said the best laid plans go awry, well, that's going to be kind of Aquarius. As we said, just flow with it. Be open to whatever happens, and you're going to rock it. Same thing in relationships. Don't try to, you know, get everything into a narrow line right now. Aquarians are going to have to be very fluid 
to have good rapport with people. So when people show up late for your meeting, just float through it and say, well, I'm just glad you're here safe. Because Aquarians will find that trying to kind of be strict or structured to an extreme this week is literally like nailing jello to a wall. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so be open to that. Also highlighted for Aquarius this week um, are issues connected to writing, uh, particularly creative writing. So if you've been wanting to write a book, put pen to paper, be open to that as well. Your key word this week, Aquarius, is openness. Be open to changes. Openness. All right, our next site is Pisces, February 19th to March 20th. You know, Pisces, this week you're, you have some kind of similar energy to Aquarians in that you can't get all wrapped up in strict structures this week. Pisces are going to find the more they play, the more success they have. And so literally you're going to be surrounded by people at work who are going to make strange demands, ask for weird requests, and have fun with it. Say, so you know what, that boss is asking me to do a miracle in five minutes. I don't know how I can do it, but hey, I'll try. Why not? You know, and just be open to creativity, breaking out of the mold. Okay. You're going to find in the area of personal relationships as well, that people are going to be very fun, loving, very free spirited. And you may even be taken aback by somebody being a bigger jokester and prankster than you Pisces. So be open to other people kind of getting your goat this week and having fun with it. Just be open to the laughter, open to the antics, open to the zaniness and you're going to rock it. Also highlighted for Pisces this week are issues connected to um, real estate or real estate purchases. So it might be a good time to be free willing and invest in a property as well. Your key word this week, Pisces, is zany. Just go with zaniness. It could be zaniness or zany. We'll say zany. <laughs> there you go. Oh my gosh, guys, can you believe that? We spun around our big zodiac wheel. Listen, I got to say it, you know, whenever you're in a time of struggle, don't give in to fear and despair. Just pause and look to the stars. That zodiac wheel is above us and spinning. And what that means is that it brings new alignments and new transits each day, which are sources of power. The stars don't compel nor control us, but they are gentle guides, friends along the way that lend their energy to help us on our journey. So keep faith, hope, and love in your heart. Don't give in to despair, and the stars will be your allies on the journey. Guys, I am so glad you're here. I want to say thank you to all of you who've taken the time to be here. You guys are the best. And, you know, listen, if you... Um, you know, or looking to do some spiritual work, you might want to pop over to my website. I've got a number of books over there that I've published. Uh, messages from Rose about my work as a medium. We've got Ouija Mysteries, a spirit board seances about my work with the Ouija board. Psyche Bob's book of Wicked Wisdom. And this is just a few. we got plenty more. But uh, these are some of my writings, and they may help you on your journey. Anyways. Also, if you're interested in getting on my schedule for a private reading, you can give me a call. I'll have the info below. Call my office 571-483-2112. We'll get you on the schedule. Or you can write to me at readings at robert-hickman.com. Again, that link will be below. I'd love to get you on my schedule for a private hour session with me. And in a private reading, it's you and me one-on-one. -on -one, and we cover everything. Past, present, future, spirit guides, all of that. Uh, answer your questions. We look at your life themes and anything you want to ask. So, you know, an hour, you'll get a lot for the hour. You guys are the best. I love you. Thank you for being here. Listen, we'll see you back here tomorrow for messages from the spirit world. And I look forward to that. So you have a blessed evening. Let's look to the stars. And until tomorrow, may you always blessed be.